Britannia Royal Naval College. When you see the building the first time, it's quite overwhelming. The United Kingdom's sole dedicated officer training establishment for Royal Navy officers. Oh, massive butterflies. It's just that sort of feeling of, oh my God, I'm here. It's been providing world-class Royal Navy officer training since 1905. It's quite a proud moment to think that you're going to become part of that. Former cadets include royal family members. Jumping off the coach, and you can sort of imagine 40 years ago, His Royal Highness Prince of Wales doing the same thing. Nowadays, it trains officer cadets from more than 20 navies all over the world. It was your decision to be here. If you don't like it, you know where the main gate is. With unprecedented access, our cameras follow an intake of aspiring officers throughout the punishing 28-week training course. Now, the training is going to be hard. I'm glad we're testing you in this way. But we need to be sure that you've got what it takes to lead men and women in battle. Most have absolutely no previous naval experience. What's up with you, sweetheart? Knees up! The first couple of days, I was thinking an awful lot, why am I here? What am I doing to myself? Fire! 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 Fire in one foot We follow their journey from Civvy Street to military leadership in the world's most prestigious navy. Many will lose their battle. Some of you will fail. Failure is good. It's healthy. It's a reward for those that remain. But those who succeed will follow in the footsteps of generations of courageous British naval heroes. You kind of think, if I can just get through this, I can get through that door and get on with my career. Naval officers, carry on! <laughs> The officer cadets are in week five of their gruelling 28-week training course. Most of them do not have any previous military training, and the demanding militarisation phase has taken its toll. Already, one aspiring naval officer has jumped ship. As soon as you lose the, the commitment to get through it all, it just falls apart. Today, Dartmouth's training staff are guiding the cadets through the final phase of the basic leadership development programme or build. We're looking at you now to really start picking up the minutiae in terms of uh, turnout, bearing uh, and professional application. They were looking like a bunch of civvies walk rocking around and to be honest they should be absolutely spot on now. Uh, so if I could ask you please to reinforce that. What we're looking for is the execution um, and the briefing of a coherent plan good command and control throughout and we're also looking for good positioning it's it's very easy for the team leaders to get intimately involved in their mission uh, or their tasks but what we're looking for is for them to stand back quality control um, the uh, the entire evolution the main purpose of build is to provide leadership coaching skills for the cadets and prepare them for able the assessed basic leadership exercise a four-day test of their command and survival skills on Dartmoor in just two weeks time the way I intend to run today, it will still be a coaching day, OK? When you go on to ABLE, they are assessed PLTs. But today, it's all about coaching. You have now Officer Cadet Lennon river, is first up for a PLT. A that is, direction. a personal leadership task. Your mission is to build a method for transporting your team and equipment across the contaminated river in order to outflank the enemy. And you have 30 minutes to complete the task. I'm 22 years old and um, I went to a state school and then I read law at Cambridge. I was sponsored by the Royal Navy throughout sixth form and university, having passed selection during sixth form. I'm going in as a pilot. I quite like to be streamed to the commando role, which is supporting the Royal Marines with uh, frontline helicopters. On build, the cadets are taught the NATO approved method for formulating and executing their plans. OK, Team 17 listening, Miss Goddard, you'll be my timekeeper for this task. Start your watch. Warning order, warning order. Our mission is to build a method for transporting our team and equipment across the contaminated river. OC Anderson and OC Stockley will use a box slashing to tie two staves together side by side. If you do this before I have finished my order preparation, lash those two sets of double staves together. OK, get to that and I'll report back with my orders. OK, stop there. OK, it's a really confident warning order. Giving out some concurrent activity. Everybody got a job? So everyone's got something to do which now has bought him some time while he can go away and formulate in his own mind what the plan is. <coughs> 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 yeah, 
OC Goddard is retaking her first term after failing on leadership during her earlier attempt. Sorry, do you want me to pull? Because you're pulling on it, I can't pull it. I come across quite direct and abrasive. Instead of kind of saying things a bit more motivationally, I just kind of get straight to the point and very abrasive and direct. And so I think that's difficult, especially when you don't really notice that you're doing it. Guys, stop! Do not touch the wet part of the pole. 18 minutes gone. OK, ready to take the strain? Jig away. Both away. Both away. We're done. Yes. I was mainly concerned about finding a construction type exercise and not having any clue how to go about bridging gaps and carrying equipment. Fantastic, Mr. Anderson. Well done. 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 Okay, team. What I'm do is stop the task there. So you've gone to 35 minutes. What I'd like you to do, you still take charge, Mr. Lennon. Get everything de rigged, everything put back and then falling back under the trees where we started. For the instructors, the fact that an officer cadet doesn't complete their PLT is far less important than the way they go about it. Carry on. O.C. Eglinton was Royal Navy rank and file before starting officer training. From Newquay in Cornwall. I've been in the, in the Navy for eight years. I joined as a marine engineer, artificer. Originally, I thought it was going to be a lot harder transition than I thought. Being, obviously, a senior eight, having your own freedom and time, um, having up to, sort of, 20 personnel to, for you to look after. But it's actually been a great mission, help, in, in a way. The mission is to cross the ravine with all team members and equipment in order to save the child. The cadets leading the PLTs are expected to come up with a two-stage plan. They start by getting their teams to do some preliminary work, while they get on with forming a much more detailed plan of action. OK, my plan is to cross the ravine using this large rope around the, the, the two small areas on, on the tree. This will be a four-phase operation. Phase one being the construction of the crossing. Phase two being the construction of the tripod. Phase three, to transport all equipment and personnel to their side. And phase four, a ten minute trek on the other side of the ravine to the camp. There you go, Bina. Let's see onto the smash of the camera with this. Pin. Good effort, OC plan. Pull the smash of the camera, well done! The second POT uh, went really well. After seeing everyone else do all their warning orders and their POTs, the, the structure was set in stone. And I think with a little bit of extra time, we would definitely have achieved the task. After labouring through the first couple of weeks of militarisation, O.C. Richardson is now settling into life at Dartmouth. At the start of uh, Dartmouth, I was struggling a bit. Um, there was a bit of homesickness going on, and uh, I was struggling a bit with the, uh, the older members of the group. But now that things have started to get a bit, a bit more cohesive, people understand each other more, it's, it's a lot easier. I think uh, I'm, I've matured a bit since I arrived. I'm in a fantastic place. I'm, I've got a fantastic career ahead of me if I push myself. This is going to be a four-phase plan. I'll give you an overview, then break down the phases with team members. Phase one, decode the codes. OC Lvov Bazarov's team leader has ordered him to break a code. I did physics at Oxford four years. Didn't do particularly well, but got out of it with a degree. Um, uh, before that, I was at Eton. It's only a two plus, so that would be a, a B. C, yeah, a B, or any, yeah, no, so that's not going to work, is it? I want to lead, and starting as an officer means one gets to do that almost right from the start. The Navy thinks I can do it, and I wouldn't have gone for selection if I didn't think I could do it. And if one can do something, one might as well try. Is there anything we can do to make it faster? No, we're done. We're done. So refugee activity, high recommend humanitarian. Humanitarian aid provided. There you go. In a few days, the cadets will learn if their leadership skills are competent enough for ABLE. Some will need extra coaching. You are the lucky ones because you are getting another chance to go through this whole process. I'm feeling a bit scared that if I don't fix it, I'll be gone. But all the cadets will be pushed to the limit. My legs after that were absolutely like jelly. The officer cadets are nervously waiting to find out how they did on BUILD, the leadership development programme. 
anyone who comes up short will require remedial coaching before they can take on the able challenge on Dartmoor. Come in, come and see. So, how do you feel now it's all over? Relieved um, and enlightened. Okay. Officer Cadet Lennon approached basic leadership development with enthusiasm and a positive, confident attitude which was recognised and embraced by the whole team. I thought I was going to get laid into then and I didn't to too much of an extent so hopefully I'll be able to carry that through and, and, do, and do well at ABLE. Mr Laval Baswell is an obviously very intelligent individual. He needs to concentrate on losing the Mr Nice Guy attitude, ensuring that when he delivers orders he gives them a strong clear and demanding style. I think we all had problems on the, the PLTs being too polite to each other. I, mean, I had that particularly, you've got to just tell people what to do, not ask them to do it. Being polite is central to the cadet's next training task, their first mess dinner. We're about to see the introduction to naval etiquette and, and how a naval mess dinner runs. Uh, we've been doing this sort of thing for about 250 years. Nelson did it quite famously, you know, the night before Trafalgar. And it's important that they get it right because the next time they dine, it could be in front of the royal family. I've never been to anything that formal before. I had to watch my P's and Q's, what stories I tell. Hold back a few of them. Um, but yeah, it's really good. You will remember from your etiquette lecture that you should use a fork like a fork and not a spoon. In the Royal Navy, port means left. Port always leads and is passed to the left. Walking into the room with the silverware out, everyone gets quite instantly kind of naval professionalism in a meal to the max. <laughs> Messing is just a way of celebrating uh, our successes as a, as a force and as an organisation. It's one of these things that the military does and that they do it very well. At the end of their fifth week, the cadets get a welcome break from endless militarisation. It's family's weekend. My wife and two girls are coming down get out and see them for the first time in five weeks. Um, that'd be really nice. It'd be really nice to miss them like mad. One more push up, then you grab the handles, OK? Three handles. My father was a refugee from the Soviet Union. In, uh, he left in 1945, and my mother's English as can be. My father's side's quite mixed, because he was from the Caucasus, so he's on that side, we've got Russian, Azerbaijansky, Georgian, Iranian, I'm not quite sure what. I'm a tad nervous because now I'm used to not seeing them, and I think I'll see them, and then I'll start missing them even more. Me and my girlfriend, we met on the station, naval officers standing in uniform on the platform, train pulls in, doors open, kind of, the just dropping and scattering of the bags and running into them. And she just jumped into my arms and she was just crying. And just to have her again, just to be able to like, be with my best friend is just completely amazing. The next morning finds Victoria's division at Sankey, the college's dock on the River Dart. The cadets are about to learn how to drive a small boat known as a motor whaler. Hey, just get used to the feel of the boat and how it performs. Awesome. As the cadets add another new skill to their growing repertoire, it's clear militarisation is having a marked effect on them. I feel a lot better in week five than in week one. I was a bit of a rabbit in headlights. I feel more settled with the Navy in general. I mean, coming straight off Civvy Street, I had no idea really about Navy lifestyle. Now try to pull it all down, take it over to starboard. Don't give the order to secure until you're in position and be able to concentrate a lot more, take a lot more in. Since joining, um, my confidence and ability just to give commands and get a, a task done has is, is improved five, six-fold. Neutral, turn to secure to the boy. Secure to the boy! 
Secure. On top of all the new skills the cadets are learning, the pressure is still on to keep fit. For Victoria's division, there's a new twist to Boots and Bergens. The 187 steps between the college and Sankey. For this lesson, folks, it pays to be a winner. OK, remember that. It pays to be a winner. Make sure you do not come out of the top ten. Trust me, you don't want to do it again. Having run up and down Sankey steps three times and trying to be in the top ten, um, which I was all both three times, my legs after that were absolutely like jelly. I didn't think I could actually walk physically any further than I had to. Let's move! The, the distinct lack of leadership and that little exercise then. We're looking you to come in, take charge, not just look after yourself. All right? Because when you're out in the moors, you'll expect that help, all right, when you're in a bit of trouble. Everybody understand? Yes, yes sir! Callum, here. The mass of cadets lining up for remedial coaching after doing build hint at how hard it is to be a Royal Navy officer. This is the last chance saloon to sort out their leadership skills before trying them out on Abel. Right, make sure you check all your kit, anything that needs replacing. Once you've checked it, bring it back to me and I'll replace it. You are the lucky ones because you are getting another chance to go through this whole process. O.C. Goddard is here because of an old problem. So how do you feel? What do you want to get out of this afternoon? Goddard? To not come across so abrasive when I speak. OK. Um, and kind of try and give motivation and make it sound like motivation and not kind of punishment. Our mission is to construct a radio antenna in order to broadcast the message back to UNHQ. OK, team, this is really important. We've got to get this message across, so let's get cracking. Okay. Your manner was completely different. I think okay. when I'm kind of told you're abrasive sometimes, it's kind of like a mental note, and then after, like, a while, I'll forget and okay. just kind of slip back. This is something that you have to have ownership of, OK, because this is you. The feedback was really, really good, and there were some really, really good points. But it's kind of the damaging effect that being abrasive has. I'm kind of feeling emotionally a bit battered by the whole abrasiveness coming back, uh, despite working on it really hard. It's kind of a kick in the teeth. And a bit scared that if I don't fix it, I'll be gone. And there are With Abel places. imminent, O.C. Goddard has only got days to curb her bossiness. The cadets have one more skill to master... <laughs> That's what that is. And then they'll be on their way to Dartmoor and everything that Abel throws at them. And you got absolutely crazy and you lost the plot! I was so, so cold on that task. I really did feel like I was going down. The officer cadets will be armed with assault rifles during the Abel exercise on Dartmoor. Today, they're learning how to fire one. Rifle up into the shoulder. Okay, now squeeze the trigger. Be sure the safety catch is working correctly. The only person that's going to take a bullet, if it's not, is you guys. After the parade ground, it's off to the firing range. Ready? Main three. Keep it pointing down there. Okay, I'll make it point down there. Both hands on the right. Main two. Both hands on the right. Your point of aim is the bottom centre of the white patch. You've got a really good split yeah. group. You've got a definite split. Everyone just going to close in and have a look at that. I was moving yeah, around. Yeah, 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 you've moved the position, and by moving it, you've got two groups now. They should be as one. Mm. Okay. You've got a good group in the middle and, yeah, pulled one. and, and two. So, like, yeah. you pulled one, definitely pulled one. <laughs> OK. If you know you're making mistakes in your position, you're definitely going to see it at the other end, yeah. OK? It's good to see that you are picking up on the fact you are making your own mistakes. 
That's what that is. This is what AWOL is designed to do. It is assessing those skills which you have now developed and it will be the culmination of your militarisation. Before the cadets head off to do ABLE, the leadership team explain what they expect of them. There are three things that can let you down, okay? Your field craft, your physical fitness, but probably more so your mental, and your command, leadership and management skills. I'm a bit worried, to be honest. I was speaking to a backfacer about ABLE and she said that you just have to accept that ABLE is probably going to be the worst four days of your life thus far. And if you accept that and just get on with it, it's just four days. You are constantly being watched. If there are any pick-up points, we will punish you. You'll be surprised how much pain we can inflict in a very short amount of time. Because of my past experience in Marines, I know how to work in the field. After getting a good report, I'm confident. I know how I used to act when I was um, deprived of sleep. I think build helped me. And just past experience have helped me develop myself to get over that and motivate myself to still be a leader and still be a good team player. Once again, if you do not demonstrate robustness and determination throughout, that's a fail. I know it's going to be tough. I know it's going to be arduous. And I know that ultimately I'll, I'll flash at some point and I, it, you've just got to really take it in your stride. OK, Sergeant Buckley. Every set of eyes needs to be on me now, because it's deadly serious, this. I am interested in you and your weapon. The two come together. I think it will be possibly the worst thing I've ever done in my life. Builds actually made me feel more nervous, I think, but Abel, they've said it's going to be harder and worse. I just can't imagine how it could be worse. Well, like, it can, but I don't want to. I'm hoping that the weather will be OK, but I have a horrible feeling it won't be. The waiting is over. It's 9am on day one of the four-day assessed basic leadership exercise known as ABLE. The officer cadets are having their kit checked as they set off for Dartmoor. Come as can, fellas. Quick, we do this. Quick, you get under the arches in the dry. What the fuck are you doing? Give him here. Look at this thing like that and I'll give you ten minutes you will never forget. We're clean now, is it? Really? Weaponry Bergen down in belly, weaponry Bergen down in belly, call and get them. On your belly, on your hands and your toes. Two more in! Two more people! Right, it's taking far too long! Straight up, pick away! Get it crashed, get over there, quickly! If the weather on Dartmoor is anything to judge by, then for most of the cadets, the next four days are going to be a living hell. On Dartmoor, the cadets will run three personal leadership tasks each. Even with his long Royal Navy background, O.C. Eglinton has his work cut out on a rain-sodden, windswept tour. Warning order, warning order, warning order. Situation. There's a minefield that runs between two rocks for miles, running east to west. The mission is to get all team members and equipment across the minefield. Limitations. We have three zero minutes for this task. OK, carry on. OK, see people on the uh, large drape over there? I've probably, in my naval career, done at least 20, 25 POTs, um, although only two of them being of the, of the warning order format, so the format was a big issue for myself. O.C. Holland and O.C. Borland can start passing the burdens to O.C. Sandu. Guys, pick me for in, let's try again! In a big throw in this time, O.C. Flant! Really not that phased. Once Able is complete, that's one of the largest milestones this term, and that is definitely the light at the end of the tunnel. We've got three minutes remaining. O.C. Sandu, you know you can do it. Good effort. Like many cadets, O.C. Eglinton failed to complete his PLT in the allotted 30 minutes. However, most of his marks for the exercise will come from the command, leadership and management style he demonstrated. After a long day of personal leadership tasks, the cadets sort out their basic accommodation and heat up a packet meal. 
while the staff sleep in tents and eat freshly prepared food. Our cadets will be living out in the open in a waterlogged field. Anyone want salmon pasta? For the cadets, sleep will be rarer than sunshine during their stay on Dartmoor. Their first night sets the standard. After just two hours rest, they are given 20 minutes to get out of their dry clothes and into their cold, wet ones, stow their kit and eat breakfast. Predictably, those who come up short are punished. What the hell? He's coming on here! Where's everyone safe? Where are you? I'm here, Sergeant. Get on your face! Stop banging him out! Get the move on! We should go help, Sergeant. You're doing press-ups, son! What is all this? I'm mad, Sergeant. I... Why? And you've gone absolutely crazy! And you lost the plot! Yeah, Sergeant. You're fucking late! And your kids all over the place! Sergeant. It's like you're doing a disaster here! When the dust finally settles, the cadet's reward is a demanding 30-minute PT session at 2 in the morning. What you do is drop it down. Up and move your head, back down. Up and move your head, back down. Ten, away you go. It may seem strange that people who want to become naval officers are made to do a land-based course like Abel. But the man who runs Dartmouth sees it as an essential part of their training. ABLE is the key assessment exercise um, for uh, the officer cadets in their first term. What it does for me is, it, is two things, really. It trains them a little bit in military skills. Also, and most importantly for me, I get them under a lot of stress. I see deep into the soul. We see whether these individuals are going to be able to crack it when things are really tough at sea. O.C. Robinson is doing his second PLT. Warning order. Situation. We have one team member who has become separated and he is stuck on one metre squared of firm ground. He is surrounded by quicksand. This is where your sort of mental strength comes in because this is where the majority of your marks are going to come from. After all, it is an assessed exercise. We had to rescue one of our team members from an island that was within quicksand. So we had to formulate a plan to rescue him and also the equipment using ropes and, well, all the PLT equipment that was available. Heave! Two, two, six. Heave! Get it in! Get it in! I was a bit abrasive at times. Maybe that's because of how tired I was. I was just being a bit too keen, wanting people to push on. So I see. Ready. Push him in. Right, get him in the bivvy. Get right. him in the bivvy. Right. O.C. Lvov Bazarov was criticised for being too polite during the leadership development coaching. The PLT, known as the hole in the wall, is his first chance to show his tough side. There is a sensitive and very important piece of equipment through that window. Everyone see. Only retrievable through that window, but it must be returned to UNHQ. Yep. My first PLT involved a package that needed to be recovered, which had uh, some sort of self-destruct device attached to a tilt detector. We recovered it from the window, but set off the tilt detector. I think the reason I got a good mark on it was because I put in a contingency plan for that, and that plan went flawlessly. <laughs> Finding the mental toughness to perform PLTs is just one of the challenges Abel throws up. To pass, the cadets also have to survive hiking roughly 28 miles, shouldering a heavy backpack. O.C. Foster is concerned. It's a big challenge, you know, it's 45 kilometres with a 50, 60 pound pack. Um, it's, it's, not, you know, it's not an easy thing to do. But the thing I'm most concerned about is I just don't want to let the other guys down. I'm obviously worried that I might not pass, but I'm not seriously worried about that. O.C. Goddard didn't finish Abel during her first effort, so received extra coaching this time round. 
but the conditions are clearly getting to her. When I'm yomping, I don't ever feel cold, and when I was yomping this time, I just was so cold getting through. My hands just were, like, frozen. During the, the warning order, I was just thinking, just let me get moving, let me get moving, let me get moving. I was so, so cold on that task. I really did feel like I was going down. They are only halfway through Abel, and the pressure is getting to the cadets. I was pleased it was dark, because I was crying. Okay, everyone, get those ear loads in. For some cadets, it will just be too much. I was glad to see him go. It showed that the train is tough enough to get rid of those who aren't good enough to make it. The officer cadets are midway through the four-day physical and mental test on Dartmoor, known as ABLE. For the second day running, they are woken up in the middle of the night and told to put their cold, wet clothes back on. But this time, it's not for a 30-minute workout. Forward, move towards the centre of the river. Okay, everyone, get those earlobes in. Nice and low. Earlobes in. You heard the captain. <laughs> don't, don't be loafing back there. Get your earlobes in. Yeah. Everyone feel like they're washing a little bit of silly off? Yes, sir. What are you trying to think now? What your silly mates may be doing. <laughs> what time they may have got their heads down. Have a think how far you have come. Considering the cadets are up to their necks in freezing water, the Royal Marine officer's pep talk has a rousing effect. The dunk in the river, that was a, a massive mental and physical challenge. To have Captain Burr in, in there with his speech, explaining not just why we're dunking you in the river, but the, the, what that's going to give you in the future and why that's going to give you a, a competitive advantage. When you uh, pass out into fleet and things start getting a bit hard, I want you to think back to this moment and remember how you looked after yourself. Generally, they just make us do things and it seems quite pointless. It's like, go over there, go over here, do this, do that. And there's no reason why. This is the first time he's actually ever given us like this big speech. For once, I think, for the first time, really, I understood like just being messed around in the mud. You forget that it's a privilege just to get here, let alone, a, you know, you, you've got to do a lot to get past, to pass out. So even if you stood there in that river, you've achieved so much. Don't be scared of it, all right? You knew it was coming. Expectations can be a lot worse than the actual event. Don't be scared of anything. Oh. Hey, George. Yeah, you all right? right? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Where are you? Listening, you're about to receive a warning order. One of our team has broken their leg. We need to get into a field hospital ASAP. Meds will arrive in 30 minutes. A new day means more PLTs for the cadets. But for OC Charters, being in command is an unwelcome break from taking orders. It's really hard, especially when you're taking charge of a leadership task. You're not getting involved in it, so you're kind of stood back a little bit, so you're just getting more and more cold. So you've really got to focus. It's really hard to stay tuned in to what's going on when you are that cold and hungry and tired. This is really important. This is our man. We've got to get him across there as quickly as possible. You know you've just got to get through the task. It's just a case of going, right, forget all those discomfort things and just get on with what needs to be done right now. Our mission is to scan the ground within the stone circles for landmines in order to determine if landmine clearance engineers are required to clear area. No one or any stores must enter the stone circles or touch the ground within it. Obviously, it's a possible minefield, so let's treat it like one. As a former Royal Marine, O.C. Kitson is bullish about passing Abel. But his naval experience isn't helping him to do his PLTs. My planning and briefing, I was... I slightly rushed them, those, those a bit. I'm a bit, bit more of a man of action, so I try and get to the execution phase. But my man management was good, and I got the task done effectively. I wouldn't say I'm having the time of my life, but it's been OK, yeah. Not too bad. No, I'm a liar. It's been horrendous, hasn't it? <laughs> it's been awful. 
<laughs> but by Friday, I'll be recommending it to people going, yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah, we had a laugh. The cadets have only had a few hours shut-eye in total since they arrived on Dartmoor three days ago. Tonight, they're getting woken up with a bang. To make matters worse, they've got to do a crash move, which means rapidly packing away all their kit in the dark. Why are you still in your fucking bivvy? With your bivvy still fucking pitched, just getting fucking changed now. Coming, come in, get out the fucking bivvy, get sorted. All right, stop funny it around. You've had 15 minutes now and you haven't moved. Then it's a 1.8 kilometre hike across the moors. Typically, they've also got to lug 16 stone dummies on makeshift stretchers. But their trek is turning into a forced march. Basically, we were lost. And we ended up just walking and walking and walking and walking. <laughs> But at the end, I was almost falling asleep. I almost just walked straight off the path. It was supposed to be 1.8 kilometres, and uh, definitely wasn't. That caused quite a bit of hypothermia in various people. I was definitely feeling it. I was seeing things that weren't there. I remember seeing a flag post ahead in the road, which definitely wasn't there, and people walking past me that definitely didn't. My knee's been really painful for the last three days, and just going downhill, and. Like, literally, I was pleased it was dark, because I was crying. Come on, George, walk with me. Yeah, I am. Stay with me. Come on, George, close that gap up. Good pace, girls. Good effort. O.C. Richardson was given remedial coaching after build. He's minutes away from starting his last PLT. Our mission is to recover the water supply without causing a landslide in order to resupply our team. Beyond the line of rocks, any weight whatsoever will cause a landslide. Go back up to Bergens and get your safety helmets and then return to me with um, all the lashings, uh, the one of the, two of the black Marlows. In fact, just bring all of the equipment. Almost there, come on. That's a shocking. That's all we're going to work with. Oh. Oh. James, don't injure yourself. I was really flagging. It was getting to the point where I just everything was aching and uh, my feet were in, in agony. Mr. Jones, well done. Stand up and uh, when you're ready. You alright, mate? I'm not sure how that PLT of mine went because I don't really remember it having been so tired from mine before. Yeah, I was a bit happier thinking that it would finish soon. After four wet, cold and exhausting days on Dartmoor, the cadets rejoin their divisions for the final task on Able. The runoff race will see them collecting Fred dummies from high on the moors and hauling them back to camp. But Ambush Division will have to compete without O.C. Richardson. I let my team down because of personal injury. I got rather badly chafed in between my legs. It, was, it wasn't pleasant. I simply got to the point that I just couldn't... I could barely walk. Yeah, let's go on, Bush. Let's, let's increase the pace. Come on, let's join it out. Let's join it out. The runoff is merciless. The end of four days, people suffering with leg, back, feet injuries. So I had problems with my feet. My team were excellent, and when we reunited as a division, there was genuine spirit to get the job done. Ready? So I was very worried that I wouldn't be able to keep up and I'd be the one to let down the team. So I was very conscious of trying to stay ahead and encourage the team. I didn't tie my boots up properly, which meant to decrease the back of the boot was digging into my Achilles. Quite painful. But once we got going, it was, everyone was so uh, kind of a high having finished their uh, able. So I actually quite enjoyed it. Finally, able is over. All that's left is for the cadets to return to Dartmouth 
lick their wounds and find out how they've done. I've just had my debrief and I actually progressively got better throughout the week on my leadership, even though the conditions, our tiredness and our warmth got progressively worse. When you see, okay, Vivian, PLT exercises and hike a few kilometres each day, that doesn't seem like a problem. However, when you throw in the sleep deprivation, the torment of the, of the marine sergeants, it's tough going, a lot tougher than I thought. I was wet, I was cold, I was tired, but I still expected to perform and be able to lead people. Um, so it's everything I expected it to be, and I think it's got the right results out of everybody. O.C. Suttle has returned as one of the walking wounded. I have blisters on my feet, on my heels, and my toes have split at the nail and the skin, and the dressing is too big to be able to fit my normal shoes on. There's an awful lot of hobbling going on around. It was the worst four days of my entire life, and I'm so relieved to have passed, because I don't ever want to have to do anything like that ever again. Although she worked hard to keep a lid on her abrasiveness, Abel didn't go quite as O.C. Goddard hoped. Oh, I actually failed overall. I thought I'd passed. Um, because despite tasks not going brilliantly, I never gave up minute 29 and still hadn't finished the task. I didn't just quit. I was still like, yeah, come on, we can do this. It's really disappointing because I thought I passed. And I think I deserve to. O.C. Goddard has now failed Abel twice on the trot. The college's cadet assessment group will decide her fate. 127 O.C.s completed the exercise in its entirety, of which eight O.C.s produced a strong pass, 98 OCs passed and 21 OCs failed. After discussing her latest yeah, failure, the group has recommended OC Goddard is dropped from training. OC Richardson has also failed Abel, but as it's his first attempt, he has been given a lifeline, additional coaching. But he has other ideas. I'm voluntarily withdrawing myself from training here in Dartmouth. I think I need a couple of years. There's sort of aspects of me that need to be built upon. I feel that if I were to leave now on my own volition and prepare myself a little bit better in the future, it would stand me a better stead to return later on rather than if I was asked to leave. I don't think he prepared as well as he should have, knowing what he was about to face and the job he was about to come into and the training he was about to uh, enter into. So I think by lacking preparation, he prepares to fail. Left wheel. Right wheel. From my point of view, he didn't have the grit and determination to, to serve in the military. So if I'm honest, I was, I was glad to see him go. I think it showed that the system here works that the training is tough enough to get rid of those who, who aren't good enough to make it. I still want to be a naval officer and I still will be a naval officer, but I feel like I'm leaving so that I can come back more prepared. It's been a week since O.C. Goddard heard she was being taken out of officer training. When I failed, I did know there was a chance that I could be compulsory, compulsorily withdrawn. But I didn't think that would happen. In a bold and desperate last-ditch bid to win another chance, she went to see the only person who could reverse the decision. Went into the Commodore's office, prepared. Amazingly, I managed to say the right thing. I don't really know what parts won him over, but a lot of it was because I admitted my faults and admitted that, you know, I'm not perfect. I am scared of a lot of things. I do find it hard, but I try. Like I said to the Commodore, I wanted a life that I could be proud of, and that is definitely in the Navy, um, without a doubt. Whatever happens to O.C. Goddard, this is the end of her spell with the current intake of officer cadets. 
she will now continue her training with another division. For the cadets who survived Abel, their training will now head out to sea. The coming marinization phase will be a real adventure. But some who aspire to a Royal Navy career will see their hopes go overboard. Coming up in part three, the cadets finally set sail and experience the pressures and pleasures of living on an operational Royal Navy ship. It's like a massive maze to kind of go play around in. Steer by hand pump steering. Steer by hand pump steering. Chip roll. 